this is one of our lettuce fields and uh, this disease that's caused this die-off right here is a very common disease. It's called sclerotinia, also called lettuce drop. But this disease occurs not just in lettuce, but in green beans, tomatoes, parsley, fennel. Uh, in all, this disease uh, eats something like 450 different species of plants in 75 different plant families. In lettuce, it, it doesn't really affect us in lettuce when we're growing it for a fresh market. But when we're growing lettuce for seed, the disease tends to strike the plant uh, as it starts to grow its seed stalk. So this plant right here, it once had a central stalk right here in the middle. You can see that that whole central stalk is rotted away. This is sclerotinia. And so this one, for example, is not going to make any seed. Some of these may escape and make a little bit of seed, but basically that's a failure. This plant is probably going to make some seed for me. It does have the disease, but it has managed to grow out of it. This plant has more resistance than this plant did. Or maybe it was just lucky. But <clears throat> we did in a few years ago a trial in which we grew 40 different kinds of lettuce in an area that we knew was full of this disease. And we did three replications of 40 kinds of lettuce. And what we were looking for was to see which of those 40 kinds of lettuce was most resistant to this disease. And we had heirloom varieties, we had uh, commercial varieties, and we had some of the varieties we bred on our own farm. And we grew this out in this half acre that I called Hell's Half Acre. And we intentionally inoculated the rows. As we transplanted our lettuce into the rows, we intentionally took inoculum of the disease that causes this, and we put it right in the row with the plants. And then there's a second disease called downy mildew that we also, that comes ubiquitously around here. We don't have to inoculate for that, but we were also looking for resistance to downy mildew. Out of that trial, we found that some varieties would die off at 100%. Other varieties would die off at 50%, and some of them would be, have only 10% of the individuals within the variety died. By using this process, this is called uh, disease nursery plant breeding, you can find, by using the disease itself as your filter, you can find the individuals that have the genes for resistance to the disease. And then what you do is you take those survivors, like say this plant right here, and you save the seeds from this, and you plant them again in the same sort of disease situation, and you test it again to see whether it does it again the second time around. If it does, then you know that you have a resistant plant. And this is a source of disease resistance for a breeding program. Because after we identified uh, good romaine types, good red leaf types, good oak leaf types, good crisp head types, good butter types, we found good varieties within each kind of lettuce. And then we began to cross those. In some cases, we crossed good butter lettuces to good butter lettuces. In some cases, we cross good butter lettuces to romaine lettuces. In some cases, we cross red leaf lettuces into green romaine lettuces. And we created a whole, um, basically, swarm of potential new varieties, which we then uh, grew out in fields later on after we had in fact, we are in about the sixth year of working on these uh, projects. We now have varieties that when I stick them out into disease situations, they don't die. This variety here has never been through the test. This is the first time I've ever grown this one, in fact. This is from Japan. This block right here, this block never went through Hell's Half Acre either. This lettuce right here is a brand spanking new lettuce type that comes from one of the premier plant breeding houses in Europe. 
um, lots of farmers, organic farmers and other farmers are growing this variety right now. Uh, this is sold in uh, the Seeds of Change catalog and the Johnny's catalog and the Fedco catalog. All the catalogs supplying organic growers sell this variety. And I thought it would be worth growing this variety so I could have it for sale too. But I've never done any breeding work on it. Well, this is the first time we ever tried to grow it. And this is usually how we start out when we're growing something for the first time. We just plant about 600 plants of it to see how they do under organic conditions. Well, this was a bad year for sclerotinia, and this is a bad field for sclerotinia because it grew pumpkins last time. And wherever pumpkins or melons grow, you're likely to have bad sclerotinia the next year because sclerotinia is what breaks down pumpkins and makes them rot in the field. So, <clears throat> we didn't really know it, or I wasn't fully aware of it when we put our crops in here that we were going to have so much problem with sclerotinia. But it has done a good job of showing <laughs> what happens when you don't have any adaptation to this disease. You can lose it all. 100% kill. The red variety, which is down there, is also a European fancy lettuce. Um, we've grown that one through about um, two selection cycles only. And with two selection cycles, you can see that it's still alive. You know, it's not, it is not as sensitive as this one was. This variety over here, where most of the patch is still standing, that's one of my varieties that came directly out of the Hell's Half Acre experiment. This one right here. And you can see that the stand there, while it's not 100%, there's definitely been loss in it. We're, we are going to get a seed crop from that, and that will pay the bills. We're not going to get a seed crop from this unselected variety, and it's not going to pay the bills. So this just sort of demonstrates the potential value and what it could mean for organic growers to have plant breeding done on organic farms for organic conditions, in defense against diseases that are major issues for organic farmers.